Hello, it's Karen. And Ruth, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Thursday. Thursday afternoon. Not raining. It is raining. Oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't raining when I was out this morning. I've just been out back with Doug. Oh, right. It's <laughs> yeah. So we thought we'd just pop on and have a little chat about stuff. Stuff. We had a very busy day yesterday. We had a big shop. Uh huh. Then. Victims of an empath, dun, dun, dun. which we were glued, glued to. Yeah, I think a bomb could have gone off and... Um, Where well, we wouldn't have moved. We wouldn't have noticed, no. Was... No no salty snacks, no nothing, just... Yeah, eyes glued. Glued to Mr Snowflake. And it was fascinating. Absolutely. He's a genius. Oh, without a doubt. And I didn't realise it was two hours long. Until it had finished and I saw two hours had gone by. Yeah, yeah. No adverts. Yeah. Didn't it didn't feel like two hours though, Not did it? At it, all. It was gripping. And then we uh, caught up on a bit of Q80 medal. We did. Because that was a, that's a funny do over there, isn't it? Oh yeah. yeah. So um Yeah. We thought you'd just pop in and have a little Chew the fat about it. Yeah. Didn't yeah. we? As an aside yeah. to all that. Yeah. Do you know why why we refer to this fair land as blighty? Uh, would it be something to do? I don't know. Well, I didn't know either, but it's it's a thing we always talk about, good old blighty, blighty don't yeah. we? Um and I've, I've I've never really thought about why we call it blighty. It sounds very it sounds very Scarborough 1920s-ish, doesn't it? It's actually more, probably, British Raj. Get out of here. Yeah. So, I had to Google this. I'm not the font of all knowledge. No. And according to Google, yeah. and I'm not verifying the truth of this matter, no. this is just simply what I read on Google, Yeah. is that in, in when the British were first over in India, the Indians referred to the Brits as polite in their language, oh. which means foreigner. Now, I'm not saying that's a correct pronunciation. Right. That's how I read it, polite. Lovely. And over the Decades. months, years, it changed into, the British changed it into blighty. Wow. And started referring to people coming over from blighty. And that's where it stemmed from. Do you know what, actually, when you said Blight, Enid Blyton comes to mind. Yeah. Anyway. It's only because it sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah. We've wandered off the track a little bit. But, well, that's where that came from. Just, <laughs> just in case anybody wonders why we refer to Britain as good old Blighty. Well, I'm uh, glad I know now. Yeah, well, that's why, so... Thank yeah. you for that, Karen. We are no longer in ignorance. Thank you for sharing with the crew. That's assuming that story's true. Oh, yeah. I don't see any reason why it's not, actually. Um, Excuse me, sorry. Also, do you know in, in um, Indian that the word curry doesn't actually exist? Probably not, because curry was Captain Curry, wasn't he? Well, curry apparently comes from the Indian word curry, which oh. I think is something to do with spices. When it came over to Britain, or wherever, it got Retranslated into curry, so. Well, I right, okay. It's, this must be an urban legend or an old wives' tale. I thought Captain Curry was on a ship carrying spices, and they served the, the, the meat had gone rotten or it, the meat was unpalatable. So he suggested chucking a load of spices in it, and that that's where it came from. That's probably wrong. Well, the two might coexist. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. There you go. Some very jolly interesting facts. Jolly interesting. That nothing to do with anything. But anyway. No extra charge. <laughs> so, victims of an empath. Ooh. It was quite a, a heavy watch, wasn't it? It was a heavy watch. And I'll tell you who seemed to find it. Awfully heavy to do, Mr. Snowflake himself. Yeah, I did notice on some of the, you know, he kept popping in for a little, uh, not a voiceover because we saw him, but when he was talking about kids being bullied, 
he was swallowing hard as if not to tear up. Yeah, he looked like he was choking back tears, didn't he? he? Did, and on yeah. more than one occasion, actually. Yeah. And he said himself, he found it horribly, horribly difficult. Mm. And this is, I don't think this is going to be anywhere near as bad as Beck. But... I, I, well, no, I think the, uh, there was more, there was more of the abuse apparent in in the Beck era, yeah, wasn't there? Yeah. It wasn't as apparent in the Crystal era, and that's why it's good that he's drawn it out because you kind of think, well, you know, I mean, it was a decade ago, and you know, she wasn't that bad. She was that bad. Yeah. She, I, I think you said before, she that was the era in which she honed her skills. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Casey. That was, I'd taken that from Casey, but it's watching the retro. This is before I even watched. We even watched Mr. Snowflake. We've got retro react coming up all over the place. Yeah. That are, are, are highlighting stuff. Well, the one you did about the driving. Yeah. Highlighting stuff that, that Mr. Snowflake didn't cover. Um, so there's a sea of it out there. Yeah. And he also, I think Mr. Snowflake said something like, um, if she hadn't gone to Crystal's, um, I said something similar. Being at Crystal's created the monster she is today. Yeah. Did he not say something similar oh, to possibly. that? Oh, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I think she started with Casey. But she really learnt a craft with Crystal, because she had the she she had the freedom there, didn't she? I think she also she didn't actually learn much because I think the Crystal era was a very unique situation that she was very lucky, stroke unlucky to have fallen upon, because something to me, in my opinion just my opinion, something wasn't right in that family dynamic before she even got there. Yeah. So what she did was honed her skills, got away with everything, and she came out thinking the world was going to be like that. Yeah. Destiny did, like you've pointed out, Destiny, it was a bit airy-fairy, didn't really care one way or the other. Destiny was all out for herself. Yeah. It was all bravado, it was all show. Yeah. You know, she's a little butch. Um, and, she, and she was very, very young. Yeah, she was very young. And, and you know, more um, masculine women can be a little bit full of bravado. And yes. Swagger and cockiness. Yeah. And that, to me, was Destiny. You yeah. know, I've seen it a million times over. Yeah, yeah. She's a predator. Um, you know, she uh, love the one you're with, kind of girl. Yeah, I mean, she's a bit of a no mark to me in the mm. whole amberverse destiny. But you then know. she moves on from destiny to Beck, who was just one hundred percent vulnerable, and that I believe that is where. I was going to say the sadistic side of her came out, but it was very obviously there from Casey. From Casey, then then Chris. Uh, to me, it was just the perfect storm from start to finish. Yeah, that it's created what she is today. Well, she was she, enabled from start to finish, yeah, wasn't yeah. she? Facilitated, enabled, encouraged, never challenged or checked. Mm. Or if she was challenged or checked, she obviously turned as nasty as you like, and for some reason got away with it. Um, I mean, something we've we've often speculated about is what was up with Crystal's parents. Well, exactly. Now, I mean, I I put forward the thought, and it's only a thought, my opinion, that um, it was evident that Crystal was involved in some kind of accident, and as a result, she was on disability payment, I suppose, wasn't? She? Yes. Yeah. I um, think we can assume that. Yeah. Which which I believe caused some of her um, personality if you like. Issues. And I think perhaps what they saw in, in Amber, what the parents saw in Amber was a 
caregiver stroke companion babysitter stroke companion yeah. because they were both out at work yeah and crystal would have been on her own all day yeah. and so the ideal solution was to have somebody living in of course in who was and her sister had moved out hadn't she yeah. she had got a sister there yeah so to me maybe that's why maybe that's why they paid her 1400 dollars a mm. month you know that that it was seen as some kind of caregiving role, and she did seem to be indulged quite a lot, didn't she? Oh, hugely indulged, Crystal. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. But then again, you see, we don't know what happened. We don't know. You know, we regard the accident. Was it with with the parents there? Was this some kind of guilt, or were they just generous with the daughter? Did they feel for her? You know, we don't know any of that. So. She she was quite indulged, and they did spend a lot of money on her, but they also spent a lot of money on Amber. Yeah. So, you know, now to have that kind of money, you've got to have some kind of high-powered job. Yeah. You know, because $1,400 to anybody else would be a... Massive. A monthly income, wouldn't yeah. it? You know, not something you could just hand over to somebody else. No. And still afford all your bills and everything. So... Mm. I don't know. I don't know what the dynamic was. That's... I don't. I don't think we'll ever know. No, that's just a speculation as to why possibly um, they allowed Amber into that position, and possibly why they didn't see what was going on under the noses. Perhaps didn't want to see. No, although the... so blind. It seems the mum wasn't very keen on her. Well. Uh, well, no wonder she ate all the mum's food. <laughs> you well, wouldn't be, there, would there's, you? There's, in the retro reacts, there's a lot coming up. Uh, uh, I think Amber just hates mothers, point blank, period. Mm, well, yeah. I mean, she was at odds with Casey's mum. Yeah. Destiny's mum. Crystal's mum. Becky's mum. Becky's mum. She was vile to Becky. Mm. Anyway. I think the one thing that Amber Reed didn't bank on when... Well, she's not a forward-thinking kind of girl. She's an in-the-moment, me, me, me. Yeah. I bet she never in the world has dreamed thought Mr Snowflake would rise. No. Because on... I know there are a lot of reaction channels, but Mr Snowflake is different. Yeah, well, of course, we had the whole um, Shape by the Algorithm. Exactly. That was a massive series, wasn't exactly. it? Which was slow to take off, yeah. but um, has since taken off very well, as have all his other videos now. Yeah. And as a consequence of the first victims of an empath, I've noticed, like I say, we there are a lot of... Reaction channels retro reacting now with new eyes. Yeah. Because of the algorithm and because of victims. And it's become huge. Yeah. Yeah. You see, she's she's another one, like uh, Meryl in Q8. She's another one that says, oh, well, it all happened 10 years ago. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm a changed person. But she hasn't changed. No. This is the this is the point. Exactly. We could look back as far as we can to where it all began. Yeah. Um, that's where it began, but it has continued. Yeah. It has never changed. To this day, it has never changed. Mm. And nor will it change. No, it won't with change. Her because also, um, and Sabine has said this in the past. I always, I always say narcissist stroke, sociopath stroke, psychopath. Take your pick, but it, Mr. Snowflake said she's a sociopath. Yeah. Or he is convinced with the evidence, evidence. Um, she's a sociopath, and uh, I'm falling. He's quite right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't say too much about that. The only, the only difference I see with sociopaths and narcissists is that sociopaths have a stronger tendency towards um, violence. Yeah. Um, Which... Uh... I don't know that... I've, well, actually, I have met a sociopath. We both know a sociopath, don't we? Um, who happens to be... Well, I'll say is a family member, but one that we have uh, excommunicated... Rather swiftly. Um, but, yeah, that's... Yeah. 
She's certainly got some uh, horrific personality disorder. Yes. I mean, she calls it now BPD. And she calls it mental illness, and I'll say again, <clears throat> personality disorder is not a mental illness. It's a personality trait. Yeah. And it can't be changed, just like somebody who's very shy. Crystal's was very shy. That's a shy personality. <clears throat> she can't suddenly become the life and soul of the party. No. Because that's her personality. But so, it can be managed with therapy, can't it? Only if the person, number one, acknowledges that they are the problem. And it can't be cured... The only thing is, with intensive specialised therapy, they can, they are able to negotiate the world by controlling their own personality traits. Mm. So you've, you've, you, what you first of all, you need somebody with insight. Eh, eh, she hasn't got that. Somebody with intelligence. Eh, eh, she doesn't possess that. So, um, nothing's going to change. No, she's not... A... And I'll die on that hill. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, but there were certainly some uh, hard-hitting points in that um, crystal era, wasn't there? You know... Um... I can just hope, just like Mr Snowflake said, I just hope she's recovered. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder if she's still with that Nina bird because she didn't sound too clever either, well, did she? Uh, well, uh, once that, once it went to the Nina and who's that other bird with the, Rafe? Rafe and I, I, I didn't know what that was about. I couldn't work out. Who was with who, when, where, and to what extent? Well, it seems to me that Nina was a friend of Anne Boleyn, and Anne Boleyn introduced Nina to Crystal. But Nina was an ex of Becky. Beck. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, who knows? Well, I mean, Beck never spoke highly of her exes, did she? No. So, yeah. What was the intention of then recommending Nina oh. to Crystal? Oh. Mm. You see, oh. even, even when they've separated, she can't help but meddle. She can't help but try and bring them down. Control. You know. Yeah, well, control them, but also she wants them to be miserable. Well, I've said this previously. With the type, with the personality type Anne Boleyn Reed is, Crystal dumped her. I don't care what she says to this day. She will bear a grudge against Crystal and want to get even with Crystal till the day she dies. Mm. And it's the same with Beck. Anybody that kicks her into touch, she will hate them yeah. with a venom previously unknown. And this is why, and I've said this before, complete cut them off. Because if they get a hook in... You've had your chips. Yeah, yeah. And she's got nothing else to do, has she? No, it's the only way, isn't it? I mean, I had to do that with my own brother because he was a raging narcissist and mm. I just had to cut him off in the end because I couldn't deal with him anymore. Mm. Um, oh, it's like... A, a, but that even then he still went around the family, you know. Well, I can't yeah, understand why I, Karen won't yeah, speak to me. I should imagine most... Of the viewers and the listeners have all at some point in their lives come across such personality types because these personality types are not rare. No. It's estimated 2% of the population have... The, now, I'm only quoting that from when I did my psychiatric training Last century. <laughs> Maybe that number's gone up 70 now. Seventy years. <laughs> Back in my day, they'd have been locked up. Locked up, I tell you. Well, you walked around with triceratops. <laughs> 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 Triceratops. What's a triceratops? The dinosaur. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Weren't you part of that famous television programme, Walking with Dinosaurs? (laughs) Anyway, my point... She's very old. My point is... Here's my point. This is not uncommon. We all go, ooh, ah. (gasps) But these people are in everybody's lives. Yeah. Anyway, happy days. Yes, yeah. I did love the follow-up that Mr Snowflake did, addressing Amber as well, saying, if you could just um, admit to this, that would be swell. Yeah. Admit to that, that would be swell. What are the odds that she's going to completely ignore it? Oh, uh, yeah, because she's very busy. I think 100% she will not address anything. No. She, or <clears throat> maybe she'll pull out Feline Beat Me Up arc. Yeah, or Casey beat me up, Ark. Yeah. She's already done that one. So. Oh, she'll be cool. It'll, it, she'll have to be the ah, victim. No, no, no. Go on. Crystal beat me up, Ark. Oh, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Anyway. She won't. I don't think she'll even address it. Because of what can she say? Well, she can say any lie that comes in. Tread. I'll tell you what she can't say. A word of truth. Oh, that, I think yeah. we can put good money on that with Ladbrokes. <laughs> it's an odds on... Winner. <laughs> Lad oh, Brooks is a betting shop. Yeah. And William Hill. <laughs> Let's not advertise them. Oh, We don't yes. advertise gambling establishments. No, don't, we don't do that either. No. Anyway. We're very boring, really, aren't we? No. We drink tea. A, a lot of tea. Yeah. We don't drink alcohol. No. We do smoke. We and do I'm, swear. I'm also tending to eat an awful lot of cheese straws. Lately, <laughs> which are not helping my <laughs> not so slender physique. <laughs> oh, I'm getting really plump. <laughs> but Karen keeps going out and bringing them home and saying, Ooh, I know you like these. Well, they're on offer. What are you going to do? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> six boxes. And of course, I'll go, Ooh, ooh. Put them in the kitchen. I won't touch those. The next thing you know, Half a box is down my neck. Half a box. And then the other half. A bit like the Gouda Stars. I know the Gouda Stars. Whole box for breakfast. Fabulous. (laughs) Gouda Stars. Aged Gouda Stars. (laughs) Melting you. I love a cheese snack. (laughs) But... You'd never know looking at you, though. Well, your mother said... Ooh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Karen's mum came round and I was going, ooh, because I wear very loose clothes. I've always been a loose garment sort, sort of girl. Yeah. They're not quite as loose as they were. <laughs> and I said to Karen's mum, ooh, I think I'm getting a bit plump. She says, a bit plump, you're getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> They're very... Nail on the head kind of family. And then she started, anyway, never mind. <laughs> By the end of the morning, I was rather depressed. <laughs> that puts me that puts me in mind of the whole sciatica incident. Oh, I've told that story before. Have you? We were out walking the dog and I had got, it was one of my very overweight eras. But I t- I'm, I'm going to admit something to you now, girls, guys. I carry it um, uh, around my middle a bit like, dare I say it, metal. Yeah. But I'm nowhere near that size. But I'm very m- I'm not a, a bottom half. I, I'm an apple shape. Yeah. So I'd piled on the weight and we Karen dragged me out for a walk and I my sciatica started to play up and I said Oh Oh it just my sciatica's just started to bite. I wonder what that is and she said it's your fat <laughs> <laughs> And I went Oh <laughs> You must stop sugarcoating things, Karen. That's just put me in mind of a, another incident involving my mum when we were in the park one day walking the dogs. Um, my mum used to walk with her best friend, um, who sadly has now 
passed away. But anyway, they used to go to the park every day. And my mum's friend had a dog. So my mum used to just join her on a walk because it got her out, a bit of fresh air, a bit of exercise. And occasionally I'd go and meet up with them in this park. And we were walking up this hill and I can't even remember what was said, but I was stood on I was stood on this grass, a bit a slight hill, and my mum was st- stood next to me, and we sat off laughing. And um, as I laughed, I started to slip on this muddy grass, <laughs> and uh, the next thing I'm sat on my ass on the grass, and when I look up at my mum, <laughs> my mum wears a wig. Um, when I look up at my mum, her bald head is gleaming in the sunlight. <laughs> and I had hold of it in my hand. <laughs> so as I fell, I must have reached out, <laughs> grabbed hold of a wig, plugged it off her head. <laughs> And plummeted to the ground. And plummeted to the ground. Well, I sat off howling. I I laughed so hard. I actually peed myself. Well, you would though. I couldn't help it. I was so I was because my mum was just stood there. A gas. Astounded. <laughs> she couldn't move for laughing. She was hysterical as well. She does have a great sense of humour. Thank God. Yeah, I was hysterical. Peed myself. By the time I stood up. Like my bum was wet. <laughs> and my mum's friend who'd been stood a little bit away, my mum's friend was quite a lady. She was very refined. Very. And um, she said, oh, look, you're all wet from the grass. I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't completely peeing myself and I had to walk around the park like that. But, oh, my God, it was hysterical. <laughs> my poor mother. <laughs> She has a great sense of humour, though. She does. Well, she'd need to. Yeah, well, yeah, she needs to with us a lot, but yeah, she does. But anyway, that's so far from whatever it was we were talking about. I can't remember. Psychopaths and Uh, 2% of the population. Crystal and... Dinosaurs. uh, Yeah. Anyway, we'd just Uh, like to say jolly good job there, Mr. Snowflake, uh, for exposing... Huge thank you. Uh, While we're on the subject of Amber... Hearty congratulations to Beck. Mm. Um, delighted to see that you're in a relationship. It seems like a very sweet girl from a picture. Hope she's a very sweet girl to our Beck, otherwise we'll be having a word, won't we? I think Beck's probably a bit wise now. Yeah. Beck looks marvellous. Yeah. Well, if that was a recent picture, yeah. Well... I mean, that could just be a profile pic, I don't know, but she did look well oh, on it. Oh, she did look well on it. Um, she but, looked better than she ever looked, you know. But tremendous news from when we last saw Beck on a live stream. Uh, she was not, it, it, not great. It was, I was delighted. Yeah, yeah. And, ooh, that's got a pinch, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Amber. And and isn't Destiny marrying Zephyr? No, <laughs> Zephyr. <laughs> Look, wait. I can never remember her bloody name. Chrysler. <laughs> Lexus. Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're getting so, married, aren't hearty they? hearty congratulations to everybody. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure, wifey, she's probably got a string of lovers now. Oh, she'll be bonking left, right and centre. All day long. All Good day on long. Good, Good on, on you, wifey. Yeah, yeah. So, strange that Amber's not found anybody yet, eh? Have we talked about karma? <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> That's saying no more. Yeah. Saying no more. Karma's a bitch. This is how all these personality types will end up. Alone. With nobody. Backed into a corner, completely alone, living in their own misery and delusion. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to your It's the general, it's generally, it's, it's not, it's not set in stone. There are exceptions, but, uh, old Biggie isn't one of them. She's crashing and burning, along with... Who's Biggie is? Biggie. Oh, Biggie. What do we call her now? Um, Big Chungus. Ch- no. Chubster. Chubster. <laughs> <laughs> Whatevs. Jabba. <laughs> that hairy piece. 
Uh, keep doing your hair, love, now. <laughs> anyway, talking of hairy pieces. Oh, yeah. Or lack oh, thereof. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, let's move on to uh, Meryl. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ooh, she's, in a, she's on a sticky wicket. Oh, she's, well, in my humble opinion, she's completely lost the plot. She compl- She doesn't know a thing about Islam. How she should be behaving, what she should and shouldn't be doing and saying. In fact, she's like the exact opposite, and she's putting it all online. She's having a go at the Muslim brothers and sisters now. Yeah. Let me just stop there and just say, Ruth lived in um, Saudi Arabia for ten years. Uh, you've also read the Quran, haven't you? Yeah, and you're quite familiar with the. Islam religion and Ruth, the culture. Yeah, Ruth's a non-Muslim, but she's quite familiar with the very uh, familiar with the it. religion and culture. Yeah. So and I can count to ten, which she can't. But yeah. so she's speaking from a place of knowledge. It's not. Just, I'm not making it. All. No, it's not me. It's sort of speculation. And it, I've not googled it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but even to me, and I know very little really about Islam. Um. But. But even to me, she's sat in a Middle Eastern country, spouting off against other Muslims, criticising other Muslims. Well, criticising everybody now. No, nobody's safe now. No, but I mean particularly Muslims in a Middle Eastern country, um, saying that she can worship however she wants, which to my understanding is not how Islam works. Not at all. Interpreting the Quran. In No, 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 Medil. The Quran is not open to interpretation. The Quran is a, the word of Allah, not God, as you call him, Allah, the word of Allah, and it is a set of rules by which you must abide. These are not open to interpretation, and they were not made to be broken. So, you fucked up there, love. Yeah, and you can't just say... Oh, well, I'll I'll just carry on, you know. She's saying, well, a Muslim who drinks is still a Muslim. A Muslim who smokes is still a Muslim. A Muslim who does drugs is still a Muslim. She seems to be under under the impression that you can behave in any which way you want as a Muslim and that at the end of the day, Allah will just forgive you. Yeah, well, (laughs) to be honest, she's not alone in that, but the difference is... There are people who are born into the religion and don't have a choice because to leave Islam is actually a capital offence. Right. Um, so, people are reluctant to, especially if you're in somewhere like Iran yeah. or Iraq or, you know, the real... Hardcore. Hardcore. You, you just do as you're told and keep your gob shut. But people who are born into it, now I've met people like that um they'll have a great life you know especially if they're moneyed they'll go around the world and have a great time and everything and then it, their plan is at the age of 40 to uh have a word with Allah and beg for forgiveness and repent now that's seems a bit sussy however that's between them and Allah and if they truly repent and uh, blah 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 that's up to Allah this woman has reverted to Islam 18 months ago so she has chosen to go into the religion yeah she's chosen to embrace Islam so she should be uh, 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 following the faith to the letter. Yeah. Because she chose it. It's not thrust upon her. And studying it. Oh. Of yeah. which she does none. I mean, are you past page, page 55 of the Quran yet? <sighs> Medal, really? And what book has she got in there that she's really reading? Yeah. The National exactly, Enquirer. Exactly. But, no, she can call herself a Muslim. Uh, the thing is, she's not behaving like a faithful Muslim. And like I say, 
that's not unusual. But what is unusual, she adopted the religion. She's choosing not to... She's choosing not to even read the Quran. She's saying that as long as she prays five times... As long as she prays... That's okay, but she doesn't pray five times a day, and I'll tell you how I know that. Yesterday, when she was sitting in the car, and she broke her fast with a date and water, and I, um, there was, there was, there's a call to prayer. She should have immediately gone to pray. Instead, she got out, looked her right side with her umbrella, and her skin tight, whatever that was she was wearing, mm. and uh, knobbed about. Then she came back and launched into that very ill, ill-chosen subject. Well, it was just venomous again, wasn't it? It was veiled venom. Oh. Or not so veiled, but... Well, w we could see it. People who've watched her for a long time knew she was seething. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's going from bad to worse. And what, what, where on earth Salah is, I'll never know. But somebody did make a good point. They, somebody mentioned that they felt this was sparked. This, uh, other Muslims can't tell me what to do. By somebody actually saying something to her in person. Now, this is Ramadan. So it's a family time. It could be that they popped round to... So this is hypothetical. Pop round to Salas and one of the females there might have had a word with her. And, yeah. uh, but you were, you were um, making a point of saying... Because um, she, she did a video of something like 10... 10 quarter four, past so. 10 at night, yeah. And you said... Why is not why is she sat on her own in her apartment? In Ramadan, quarter past ten at night. In Ramadan, especially for somebody who's sleeping all day, which she obviously is, and I'm assuming, quite rightly, Salah doesn't work. Um, it's a huge time for family gatherings and whatnot, and she's been on her own every night during yeah. Ramadan. So summit's up there. But in my humble opinion, she's right round the hat right now. Well, I mean, it just it's, it speaks to me that she's one, she's not married. They're not married. Yeah. Two, he's definitely not living there. Yeah. Because if that was a normal marriage, he would be taking her to visit his family. Of course, all the family would be coming to them. Yeah. Or the neighbours. It's like Christmas. <sighs> Celebration wise, after the sun sets. It's like Christmas for a month. Yeah. The sh the shops are all open till 4am. You know, like, she goes out and everything's closed. That's because everything will open after sunset. Yeah. It was... Gr I, I've spent a lot, I think, ten Ramadans in Saudi. It was great. It was yeah. Because I used to work nights as well. So on my nights off... You could go out shopping till all hours. How and, far? Yeah, and everybody was nice. Wasn't quite the same all year round because the in the decade I was there, Westerners were not. We were welcome because we worked and whatnot, but there were some feelings, some bad feelings, well, wherever you are in the world. But, oh, they were so hospitable and friendly and kind, especially during Ramadan. Well, that's the spirit of Ramadan, isn't yes. it? Yes, and you'd be invited to all sorts of do's and it, they were just very generous and... Uh, lovely, yeah. lovely. This is why it's amazing that she's on her own. It's not a time. Ramadan isn't then isn't a time, is it, that you should be on your own? Well, it speaks volumes about what she is. Uh, or this, what she isn't. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Amberlynn is. Oh, I mean, Meryl is. 
Yeah. Separated at birth. Yeah. <laughs> and they're both uh, not going to do very well, no. in my opinion. I'll tell you what I wouldn't ever do um, is go to the Middle East and criticise Muslims. <gasps> Even if I was wearing a hijab. I wouldn't be sat there criticising Muslims because you don't know who's listening. But it's just you don't know who's going to be knocking on your door. I'll tell you what, you'd never have got away with it in my day out there. Never. There's no saying she'll get away with it today. There were people carted off for less, and that is the truth. Mm. Mm. Luckily, I'm very diplomatic. Very, very, very diplomatic. You'd never last it out there. No, I wouldn't. Especially no. with your red hair. No. They'd have been offering camels and out, you know, for you. <laughs> You'd have been much sought after till you opened your gob. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I'm dark and swarthy, so I used to be mistaken for an Egyptian. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being mistaken for an Egyptian, but... The blonde, blue-eyed um, Westerners did seem to get showered with loads more gifts than I did. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do bad out of the deal. I didn't do bad out of the deal. Uh, I didn't. The heydays. No, and it was a very enriching life experience that I never perceived would would... I'd carry to this day and become a real bore by saying, I'm just going to sound a rape every 10 years. Yeah, but that... The only reason I'm bringing it up is because I know what I'm talking about from um, uh, observation of Islam and the faithful and I don't have to be a Muslim to... No. Well, nobody has to be a Muslim to... Um, understand. Understand that there are certain... Principles of yeah, Islam. Yeah. And uh, the only person who doesn't seem to understand is her uh, in uh, Kuwait. Mm, claiming to be a, a Muslim revert. While her husband wants to uh, do a damn thing. <laughs> anyway. Crap on bitches. Uh, uh, and Bibles, anyway. Anyway, it's a little distasteful for us, isn't it? Yes, it is, darling. Yes. We don't we don't indulge that behaviour. We certainly do we? <laughs> We've certainly we have in our time. Anyway, we, come we, on. Who did we say the other day we were gonna talk about though? No, not now. Not oh, today. I, I know, I know who it was. I know who as well. I know who it was, yeah. Anyway, this is this another day. No, no, oh. no. I'm just gonna say this because we were just chatting the other day about um certain Adult behaviours. I don't want to say the F word, but certain adult behaviours. And it brought to mind um, a girlfriend of mine had a best friend, a male best friend. Oh, and, yes. And um, he was into um, BBWs, shall we say, in a big way. And he married a rather large lady. What he didn't tell her was that he had a um, predilection um, to dress up as a pony. And after he got married, he said to my girlfriend, his best friend, I made these hooves. <laughs> Can you please keep them at your house because I don't want my wife to find oh, them? I couldn't believe <laughs> it. Actual hooves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a pony. And he put hooves on. Yeah. He used to dress up, yeah, yeah. He had a Pete. And I'm sure to this day his wife's still got no idea. Well. She's not been my girlfriend for a lot of years, so. Uh, yeah. Well. He was a bus driver as well. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, not in my company. Well, hooves. well, in my company, but not in my locality. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, you never know who's driving your bus, do you? <laughs> Men that wants me ponies. Oh, yeah, you did tell me that story, and I can work out what what logistically happens. He puts hooves on. Yeah. Back and feet and... I assume so, yeah. Hands and feet. Yeah. And then assumes the pony position, and then what happens? Google it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. 
Well, keep it clean. Google it. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing as well. I mean, these these adult behaviours are wild, 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 wild. I mean, the tales we used to get when we worked on the phones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did make your hair curl if it was if it was a straight, literally. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway. Anyway, that's yeah. for another day. Yeah, that was another digression, so... It, it um, was, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, think... well done, Mr Snowflake. Jimmy Bunker, I absolutely adore you. Oh, oh. Did you know, Karen, Jimmy Bunker has subscribed to our channel? I did. Oh, of course you because did. Because you went and told him to. <laughs> no, I asked him. And he did. I don't think he's watched any of the videos, but hey, Jimmy. We never know listening. what he's watched. Jimmy, we love you. I really love you. We love the pair of you. You absolutely both. Yeah. Jimmy's he's, got he's, the looks. Yeah. He's hysterically funny. I think they're both handsome fellas. You know, they've both got their own qualities. I think... Jimmy, for me, has that je ne sais quoi. The X Factor. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's dark and swarthy, you see. Yeah. I was just thinking to myself in the, poor, in the kitchen before when I was waiting for the kettle to boil. Wouldn't it be fabulous if Mr Snowflake did a hunky calendar? <gasps> oh. Mr Snowflake... Do a hunky calendar. We're requesting you do a calendar oh, yeah. for next year. He's got a build on him. Oof. Ooh, what a body. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. <laughs> anyway. So is Jimmy, though, when Jimmy's ripped, he's got a good bod on him as well. But that's what I mean about Jimmy's got that je ne sais quoi. It's... It... it, it uh, I, I'm stuck for words. That's how Jimmy <laughs> gets to me. I just... Oh. <laughs> anyway, before we start lusting... Shame I'm too... Hey, if I was two weeks younger... <laughs> <laughs> two decades. <laughs> anyway... <coughs> Excuse me. We've gone on a bit. Yeah, we have rather. But uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah. I mean, if you stayed this long, well, bloody hell, you deserve a medal. Oh, yeah. We're just two old ladies prattling on. Yeah. But, um... It's been fun. Yeah, it has been fun, so we we hope you have a lovely day. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll be back when uh, Madame Pompidou comes and talks about shite. Oh, before that, yeah. who knows? Yeah. We'll just pop up whenever. Yeah. Right, we're going to we, go and put the kettle on. That's what we do. We turn up. Yeah, we turn up. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Have a lovely day. Thank you to all. And we'll see you soon. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Mavis and my hand. Thank you. <laughs>